COVID-19, job losses, unemployment, racial injustice, civil unrest, just personal losses. These things have happened to many of us, business losses, disappointments and setbacks. These things are permeant in our society right now. And I'm here to tell you that this too shall pass. You know, you're ready for a comeback. And let me tell you that you will make it. You will come through this. You will become a champion. My name is Kent Wise. I'm an author, motivational speaker, inspirational speaker, coach, minister, and an entrepreneur. And I've suffered many setbacks in my life. Many times I needed to come back. But let me tell you, you will come back and you will succeed because inside of you, you are a champion. You know, all of these areas have been affected in our lives. And many of us right now, to be honest with you, are just not in a good place right now. Many people who are doing well in one area of life may not be doing well in another area. Maybe they're doing well financially, but personally they're depressed and things aren't going right. People started the year with optimism, with faith. Then this thing called COVID-19 hit and it just slowed things down. It put things to a halt and people were inside of their homes. People felt trapped. And people felt like there was no way out. They couldn't talk to their friends. They couldn't visit family. They lost business. They lost jobs. And so people are, were put into a place where they were in a setback. But I'm here to tell you that you're going to come past, come back. And this too shall pass. I'm here to talk to you about the four hours of perseverance. During this season of storms, and that's what it is. There's a lot of storms going on in our lives right now. But you're going to sail through the storm. You're going to do very well. I talk about four things, the four R's of perseverance. Hey, let me tell you, I've been there. You know, there was a time in my life, just about five years ago, where I suffered a major business setback. And on top of that, I suffered some personal losses. I lost two brothers, a sister, and a nephew through death. And you're talking about being in a bad place being put in a setback. But I'm sharing with you some things today that's gonna to help you come back. The four R's of perseverance. So buckle up and get ready because God has something for you. You're going to make it, you're going to come back. Number one is to reassess. The first one is to reassess where you are in life. You know, the important thing in life, I think what happened with many of us is that we kind of gotten away from what's important in our life the major things that are important, which are health, family, friends, and just overall, uh, overall well-being, and just the uh, strength that you may have, the inner strength. And you know, it's good sometimes to reassess where you are. And I make this statement many times that scarcity brings clarity. Scarcity brings clarity because now you focus on what's really important in life. So where you're in a setback and you wanna come back, one of the first things we have to do, and I would encourage you to do it, is to reassess where you are in life. You know, I have an exercise, and you know what, I tell people just to do, do this. You know, I share this with my audience. I say, grab a sheet of paper, I'm doing it right now. And just draw, down the line. I say, draw down the middle of the line of the paper. You could draw down the middle of the line. And on one side, put down, write down blessings. And the other side, write down problems. And then start listen, listing your blessings. And I encourage you to start with what we will call or perceive to be the small things in life. The very small things. Number one, we woke up today. Number two, you have a roof over your head. Number three, you have health. Number four, you may have family. Number five, you have food today. And just keep writing all of your blessings down. I mean, I write down things that I'm thankful for my flowers in my yard. You know, I'm thankful for my wife, my children. I keep going down the health and strength. I'm thankful for my automobiles. And keep listing those things. 
On the other side, you can write down your problems. And I'm gonna say this to you, that your problems will not match the blessings that you have. See, many times, this is just the power of what we, what we focus on. See, many times people focus on the job loss. They focus on, on COVID-19. They, they focus on what they see in the news and what they see in the media. And those things are real, don't get me wrong. They're real. They do affect us, but it doesn't have to overtake you. So just reassess. I think even with COVID-19, I think people actually, when they were shut in for a while, people sat down and ate dinner together. People, you know, reconnected with family members. Uh, they sat down and actually ate uh, dinner with their children. And I joke around and said, sometimes the parents say, hey, what grade are you in again? Because sometimes they didn't even talk with their kids because we were just so busy. And so it's good to reassess as you go out and go forward, as you make this comeback. And you will make this comeback, I promise you that, because trouble doesn't last always. So keep going forward. So reassess. Number two is to reflect. Reflect where you are in life. You know, I say in reflection, it's time to go back to passion. Because I, I mean this with all of my heart that all of us on this planet, we want to come through this planet one time. And God has given each and every one of us a destiny and a purpose in our lives. And so the passion, it, I, I would encourage you to go after your passion. Whatever it is that you dreamed of when you were a little kid. Whatever it is that stirs you up, that dream that you have inside of you. You know, many times being fired from a job may not be the worst thing. Because it could trigger you into your passion. You know, I spent years in corporate America, a lot of years in corporate America, and I was deemed to be very successful. But you know, I wasn't living my passion. My passion is to speak, motivate, to become an entrepreneur, to control my own destiny, to touch the lives of others in this world that we live in. That's my passion. And even though I was making a lot of money, and even though I would, would, be, would be perceived to be quote unquote successful, I knew deep down I wasn't living my passion. So if your boss says, hey, we're gonna have to let you go and get rid of you, you may want to give them a high five and say, thank you. You gave me, you, you're doing me a favor because now I was afraid to step out into my passion right now. So right now I'm going to step out. I would encourage you to step out into your passion. What are your dreams? What are your goals? What is it in life that you really want to do? What's boiling on the inside of you that you think about doing all the time? What is it that you want to do? That's your passion. Reflect on it. Go back to your dreams. Go back to your vision. See, pa passion stimulates you. It gets you going. If you ever have that pit in your feeling that, hey, I don't want to get up and go to work, you're in the wrong profession, you're in the wrong job. Go after it. That should be flat back. Things that push you to your dreams. So number one, reassess. You know, in that reassessing, just be thankful for where you are right now. Look at the little things in life that are such a blessing to you. And number two, as you reflect, go forward into what you were really called to do. You know what would really would be, I don't want to use the word of shame because there's no such thing as a wasted life. Every life is fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Every life has purpose. Every life has meaning. But one thing that you don't never want to have the regret is that I never tried. I never tried to do it. So as you're coming back right now, you may have had a, not a good start in 20, the first uh, two Three, nine months or eight months of uh, 2020 may not have been what you wanted. But today's a new day. <laughs> I would say that, see, give us this day. See, this is day one. This is January 1. Every day really is. The past is gone. It's in the womb. The future is going. The past is in the tomb. The future is in the, in the womb. You're going forward now. You're moving forward. And number three, to reinvent. Sometimes it's, it's good to reinvent yourself. Just to say, you know what? I used to do this. 
Now I'm doing this. This is what I'm really called to do. And let me speak to you from the heart. Failure is inevitable for all of us. But quitting is not optional. You know, analogy that I really love to use is an analogy of Major League Baseball, of a baseball player. They're all compensated to, to succeed only 30% of the time. And for those of you know who, who are familiar with the nuances of baseball, that means every 10 times that the player comes up the bat, he gets a hit three times. That means he makes it out seven times. That's 30%. You know what 30% is in our educational system? It's an F. You know what it is in baseball? It's $10 million a year. <laughs> because you don't have to hit every time. You just have to hit sometimes. So I want to encourage you, keep going forward. Reinvent yourself. Go back to school. Retrain yourself. And all, see, all of these steps, they, they go after one another. Re, as you reassess, reassess yourself. As you reflect, you go now to reinvent yourself. Become better every day. I commit, you know, it's a commitment to get better every day. You know, it's, you may have lost your small business, start another one. You see, I, I tell people I, I've done well and I'm very blessed, but I failed a lot. You know, I, I have advanced degrees, but I have a PhD in failure <laughs> because I failed a lot. But you know what? I succeeded as well. I like what Tyler Perry says. He says, I kept failing, I kept failing, but one day I hit and he kept going. So I want to encourage you, keep going. Reinvent yourself. Now, some people say, well, Kent, you know what? I'm at this age now where I can't go back to school. Yes, you can. I don't know if I can start another career. Yes, you can. I'm too old, I'm too young. You know, Colonel Sanders was 65 years old when he started his business. We all know the business, Kentucky Fried Chicken or KFC. You know the story, he got his first social security check and said, whoa, that's it? Man, let me think about it. You know, I got this chicken recipe that I've been sitting on for a long time. Let me go out and bring this to the masses and the rest is history. Now I want to ask you a question. What is it that you're sitting on? What idea is it that you have? What is it that you've been afraid to step out in faith? See, faith without works is dead. You have to move forward in faith, in confidence in who you are and what the universe has called you to do. Getting back to the passion, to reinvent yourself. Don't worry about other people the opinions of others. And as you reinvent, I would encourage you to start becoming a student of motivation, of thought. You know, you become more and more what you think of. Here's what I call becoming a student. It's a, and this has worked for me and I've shared this with many people. No matter whatever your passion is, as you reinvent yourself, maybe you want to start a new business, you want to start a new career, or maybe you want to lose weight, you want to get better physically, you want to get in better health, whatever that is, maybe you want better relationships in your life, maybe you want to attract good things into your life, whatever it is that you want to attract, spend at least 30 minutes a day reading on that information, on whatever it is, become a student. And that's a minimum of 30 minutes a day. I've done it, it's been very successful for me. The next thing is, as you're listening to audio things, you know, it's good to listen to music, entertain yourself, but also listen to positive, motivating, uplifting things. Listen to how you can become better in your craft or in your skill or in your trade, because you're reinventing yourself. And you do that day after day, after day. Now it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard work, but you do it more and more. You know, I've done bodybuilding and I lift weights, you know, at least three or four days a week. And people would come to me at the gym and say, wow, you know, how did you do that? And I tell them it didn't happen overnight. 
I've been doing this for over 20 years, 20 plus years, if not more, each day doing that next rep. How did you get your biceps like that? Well, it wasn't in one rep, but it was rep after rep after rep. How did you get your pec muscles like that on the bench press and on a dumbbell press? Well, it wasn't one day, but it was rep after rep after rep over a period of time. And that's what you see right now didn't happen overnight. It took a period of time. So I want you to commit to reinventing yourself because you can do it. It's inside of you. And as you do it more and more, you're going to go into what I call the law of seed time and harvest. You plant you're going to get what you plant. You reap what you sow. If I want an apple tree, I plant an apple tree in my backyard. I should expect apples to come up. But if oranges come up, that's not what I planted. And so as you reinvent yourself, just continue to sow into your own life. Keep doing what you know is right. As you start that new career, that new journey of life as you re, uh, start your business or start a new business. Keep going forward as you reinvent yourself. You know, I, I talked to, I heard a, a young lady who, she worked uh, in the corporate world for a few years and just earlier this year, she got laid off, furloughed and not called back. So instead of feeling sorry for herself, which, you know, the tendency in life is to do that. She said, you know what, it's time for me. Hmm to reinvent myself. You know, I always had a passion of being an entrepreneur, of being my own boss. So she started in the hair industry. And after a couple of weeks, she started making a little money. And after six months, she had enough income to replace what she had in her corporate job. What did she do? She reinvented herself. What should I do on a constant level? Reinvent myself. What would I encourage you to do on a constant level? To reinvent yourself. To continue to get better and better and better. See, this is not something I would encourage you to try. This is who I am. This is part of my life. And as you reinvent yourself, you know, and it starts right in the beginning of the day. You know, I call it winning the day. You win the day when you get up early. And, you know, whatever religious belief you have, you say prayers, you exercise, you start studying on that passion of yours. And before the day even started, <laughs> you won the day because you're focused on your passion and you're reinventing yourself. So reassess who you are. So do that. You know, I encourage you to do that. Just be thankful for the little things where you are right now. Take a deep breath and say, this too shall pass. And let me tell you, it will pass. Reflect on, what, on your real purpose in life. You know, there are many... People in, there, are, there are many people in the wrong profession. They're not in where, where God wanted them to be. You know, listen to that small, still voice on the inside of you that's telling you, this is where I need to be. You know, I've had to overcome so much in my life. That's why I know these keys work. <laughs> and then reinvent. Make a determination and a commitment to get better. And finally, re-energize. Just know that this too shall pass. See, when you re-energize, I want to talk about the power of faith right now. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you're looking to see it first, then you're not walking in faith. What faith does is give you energy. They say, I'm not going to quit. I'm coming back tomorrow. When they say no, I'm coming back. They say no again, I'm coming back. In my speaking career, in my entrepreneurial career, do you know how many times I've been told no? But I'll be back. Because I have to keep myself energized. And part of being re-energized is having perseverance and having faith 
and being intentional on focusing on what you want in life, not on what you don't want in life. And you'll come back. So I just want you to know that you're going to come back. Stay focused. Believe in yourself. You will make it through this and it will make you stronger. And I just want to share with you right now how I know these keys work. My background, when I was only in like the third grade, I was diagnosed with being borderline mentally retarded and I had a terrible speech impediment. So I had to make a comeback. He said he would never make it. I, I grew up in poverty. I grew up in the areas of uh, the city of Cleveland that's uh, deemed impoverished and it's impoverished right now. But I knew inside of me, there was something great inside of me. My parents are still something great inside of me. They didn't give me money, but they gave me hope and they gave me faith. And I came back. Once I went to college, I was in the college. And I said, well, I'm behind. I came from an educational system that didn't prepare me for college. And after a couple of years, I was on what you would call academic watch. On the break, I'm not finishing, but I made a comeback. I used these keys. And during my last year of college, I made the dean's list. Faith. And you can have that same faith. It's inside of you. Even in my career in corporate America, I had hard times. I had to come back persevering I mean, from having hard times, but I always rose to the top. See, you, you, you'll be just like a cork. No matter how far they throw you in the water, you're going to always rise up to the top. And even a few years ago in my life, when I had that personal challenge with the loss of loved ones and that major business setback, it was a setback. It was real. As positive and motivating as I am, I was going through a period of time where I was semi-depressed and wondering what's going on. God, why is this happening to me? But I came back. And during this time, you're going to come back. See, it's all about you doing what you know is right in your heart. It's all about believing in yourself. It's all about knowing what the purpose is for your life. It's all about reassessing where you are. Be thankful for what you have right now. And we're going to start a new right today. It's about reflecting. What is my real call and my real passion? What is it that I'm really called to do? God, why am, I, why am I here on this earth? What is my assignment? Number three is to reinvent myself. Once I find my, re, my assignment, let me reinvent. It doesn't have to be just professional or career-wise or monetary. It could be in my relationships. It can be in my health. I need to come back in that area. You know, I could just having joy. See, I'm full of joy. Having joy is good. You know, give me joy over the money anytime. I could always get the money. But give me joy and health. <laughs> and I have that. I have enthusiasm. And I just want to share that with other people. My passion is to help others, is to help you. And finally, re energize. Get that energy going. Never quit persevere to the end for you will come back and this too shall pass this is kent wise i want to encourage you to keep going forward to finish 2020 strong and to get ready for a dynamite i mean a, my a great great 2021 forget those things that are behind and look forward to those things that are ahead beginning at this moment right now. And you will come back. For this too shall pass.